What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys, what is going on? It's Jay Campbell, of course, the author of a bunch of books, and of course, now the founder of the Jay Campbell Podcast. I'm very excited today to be joined in studio virtually with Laura Eisenhower. A lot of you guys that are on this show and are familiar with me, and of course, already familiar with her, she needs no introduction, but for some of you guys who do not know who she is, I'm going to give you her bio real quick. Um, she's a global alchemist, researcher, and intuitive astrologist. She's an internationally acclaimed speaker who has presented her work worldwide. I've actually seen her speak twice. She's a great granddaughter of President Dwight David Eisenhower. Some of you people who were born after um, 1965 probably know who that is. And if you were born after 1990, you probably don't. <laughs> she is considered by many to be one of North America's leading researchers on health, exopolitics, alchemy, metaphysics, galactic history. Amazing stuff. Again, she's a very accomplished person, 3D holographic time loop, false narcotic systems. And again, it's my honor to have her here today. So, you know, Laura, how are you doing? Welcome to the show. I'm doing great, Jay. How are you doing? It's amazing. Thank you for having me. You. <laughs> You're very, very well welcome, and I appreciate it. And uh, Laura and I did a podcast about a year and a half ago, uh, if you remember, with Jeff Doherty. And it was amazing to speak with you. And, you know, you're a very uplifting person and I'm an uplifting person. And we just had really, really good chemistry. And so I've been really looking forward and excited to be getting, joining just you and me doing this. Um, as I always do on my show, that before we jump into the topics, which are numerous, um, I want to just kind of ask you, you know, how did Laura Eisenhower get here speaking with me today? Well, I, I, I had a pretty... Uh, unforgettable experience last time we talked and I'm really open when I'm invited to do an interview anyway but I really something stood out that conversation that when you invited me I was a little bit extra enthusiastic and amped sure. <laughs> and then I uh, somehow the notification didn't get to me and you were totally cool about it. And then this time around, I've been texting. I'm like, we're tomorrow, right? But we're on it a little bit, right? Because it's very rare that I miss an interview. And uh, but yeah, no, yeah, I love I love your energy and your perspective and clarity. So awesome. Um, and yeah, and, and we've known each other for a long time too, and we're friends. Yep, yep exactly. I met you at Contact in the Desert last year, um, and I watched you speak, and uh, you know, a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's just jump into things. We're in obviously a very crazy time. At the time that you and I are recording this podcast, it is 2-20-2020, 2020, right? So incredible energy. You are obviously a gifted astrologist. Talk a little bit about where we are today in the evolution of planet Earth. Well, we're dealing with a Mercury retrograde. I'm sure everybody's been yes, feeling we are. that. Um, and the month of February, sun moving into Pisces, February 19th, which is literally what, yesterday? Um, so that Piscean energy is very much increasing and the planet Neptune is already in the sign of Pisces. So as this month unrolls, we're going to be connecting into the multidimensional and our creative imagination and everything that Piscean energy represents. And it also rules self undoing and also empathicness. Yeah. And for some that can end up feeling like an overload. Um, we've had a lot of planets moving through Capricorn. Uh, the Pluto-Saturn conjunction that was peaking in early January. Um, also, you know, Jupiter moving into Capricorn and now Mars. There's just a lot of attention on the Capricorn uh, in relation to the eclipse window period and the south node being in the sign of Capricorn. So the south node represents the past. It re represents, um, if we look at it on a larger perspective, because we're all being hit by this, the, the, the dark cycles of history that we've all been through. What kind of ancestral patterns did we take on? What sort of programmings or belief systems are we holding on to that's keeping us stuck in the old paradigm? Right. And that is coming up for people to look at. And for some, it's like a huge relief, you know, just saying goodbye to it and feeling the encouragement. And others, it's really debilitating and it can be, right. you know, quite difficult. And, and then you open up the multidimensional with this Neptune Pisces 
um, you know, I mean, it can help, but it can also show us where our creative imagination has been infected or haunted by traumas of the past and by these belief systems that have been behind a lot of the structures and programs of society. So this gives us a chance to kind of lift our head above it all and reframe everything and set our intention about visions and goals that we have for the future. But if we're not aware of it, it can easily um, undo a person, self undoing, right? So the Neptune energy also connects with addiction. Um, a lot of people are having issues with that right now, or at least a lot of clients. And, uh, and I'm always trying to watch myself with that kind of stuff. You mean like, um, and then you mean Uranus that, is a high level electrical energy that's really stimulating the nervous system, which can create a lot of anxiety for people. And then soon we're going to have a Saturn square Uranus, which is really the final piece of how the old paradigm is crumbling. Because Uranus is like the wrecking ball, out with the right. old, in with the new. But it's an electrical energy and it really st stimulates the nervous system. It connects us with authenticity and truth. But if there's attachments we're not ready to let go of, either, even if they're unconscious, sometimes it, it, it happens sooner than people are ready for. And that can be very destabilizing. So let me ask you this. <laughs> you put so much information out in such a short period of time. Um, it's kind of hard to keep up with you, Laura, but I'll do my best. Um, so right now, I want your opinion. The coronavirus, the nonsense, whatever this is, if it really is a virus, if it really is just some sort of deep state, you know, dark force, economic hit of our global economy, you know, what is your take on what it really represents? Well, I mean, I think it's, it's definitely a, an attack. There's always going to be some sort of cover story to sure. um, give people a feeling of, okay, well, you know, this is news. This is unfortunate. This is what happens. Um, we've seen it before with Ebola and SARS. Uh, this is already presenting itself as being worse. Right. There's always things that we're not seeing, and there's right. things that we are also seeing. We've got alternative media as well. Some of it um, uh, is a compromise. Some of it isn't. So it really comes down to, to each of us. With so much opened up um, right now, as far as our multidimensional self and the sure. creative imagination, it's really like, what are we going to make out of it? Right. What we've really struggled with is Project Mockingbird, manipulation of the media, and how that's affected our creative channels yes. and our ability to co-create a future. Very often we feel at the mercy of things and we'll just almost take in and absorb anything that gets thrown at us. Now people are asking more questions. Right. So I think, you know, right now it's really about doing research, about looking at yourself, you know, being cautious and protective just in case it were to travel, but knowing that um, the, uh, the shadow groups do definitely have it in them to create bioweapons and very much... Um, I, I would do some research about Bill Gates and what he's capable of doing. <laughs> what he's associated with, right? So everybody do your research and don't panic at the same time. You know, it's important to be prepared without the fear, but be right. um, allow that concern though, to help you to cover your back and, right. and cover all bases. Right. So point to that. It's funny you brought up Bill Gates, but um, I, you know, I'm involved in manufacturing in one of my companies and we already know that there is going to be supply chain, quote unquote, disruptions just to what I'm involved in personally, right? It's not me speculating and I'm not fear mongering, but I know that. So if, if there is, again, you know, to what you just said, if there are supply side disruptions, again, so much manufacturing comes out of China. We know that nothing is coming out of China right now. And obviously the media is closed off, which is, again, indicative of something going on that we have no idea about. People should be prepared, as you said. And when I say prepared, I put this on Twitter yesterday. I think you actually liked it. But you should have water and you should have protein powder. You shouldn't be a prepper, you know, and I'm not recommending that. It's not fear, doom, gloom, you know, guilt, any of that. I'm just saying that you should be intelligently planned ahead so that if there are, you know, supply chain disruptions at Target or Walmart or CVS or any of those places, that you're not running around, you know, again, as you already said, the media. The shadow groups control that. They will incite fear. They will tell you, oh my God, we're out of tampons at Walmart. People should have a plan. I mean, do you agree with that, that they should prepare somewhat? I can only give you kind of a, a advice I live by. Sure. Um, and, and there's some things that I probably should do that I would still suggest uh, that um, I, I you know, put my attention on. I've, I've mostly been nomadic most of my life. Sure. So you know, being in one place... Uh, and the way things have been set up here before I even came was all about preparation without fear. Of course. Uh, making sure that, you know, in the event that, you know, even the, the energy grid shuts down, right. what would we do without power? So it's not just virus. There are all <laughs> sorts of things that are breathing right. down our neck. We're, we're not in a stable system. 
No. And so there's a lot of false stability that might make people think, oh, I don't need to be concerned about this stuff. Well, now you're talking virus and it hasn't hit us enough, but don't you want to be prepared now in the event that there might be huge lines? Is that fear-based? Right. No. I mean, when we're on an airplane, we hear every time we're on an airplane, I mean, how many times do we have to hear about the freaking yellow slide exactly. and yep. whatever's underneath our chair and the oxygen masks? Um, when sailing a boat, there is life jackets. Right. It's always good to be prepared. We're on a human adventure, and I think that's necessary, period, particularly in these you know, end times. But we also have to look at you know, what are we empowering? What are we attaching ourselves to? Where are we maybe infected by these mind viruses that get exacerbated by um, our unwillingness to really look at the fullness of all that we're made of. Because right, right now we're in a time of DNA upgrades and you know, stepping into our greater potential. And so we need to match it with a lot of self-work. Because if right. we're only at the mercy and we're fear-based, um, it's not that we're gonna manifest zombies coming in this huge virus that's gonna <laughs> put our attention on it. But you know, being prepared means we can relax a little. Right. And with relaxation, we're not in our survival chakra. When we're in our survival chakra, we're not really connecting to our higher self anymore. Right. We're just like in self-preservation mode. Exactly. Um, and we don't have utilization of our higher abilities that actually run on different physics than what we've been taught in school. Well said. I want you to define something because I think a lot of people, and I know what you mean when you, by what you said, but I want you to define or clarify a little bit. You said the end times, right? Now, most people, when they hear that, they're like, oh, my God, Laura said we're in the end times. It's over. But I know exactly what you mean. The ancients talked about the energetic shift, right? We're in the transitional. You could talk about the, you know, the, the, uh, the procession of the equinoxes, whatever. But we are in that junction or that conjunctive area where things are changing. But can you define that for people so that they have a little bit more clarity on that, what that means? Yes. So uh, looking at anything that relates to end, there's no such thing as an end anyway. When we're dealing with the planet Pluto, Pluto is the planet of death, rebirth, alchemy, transformation. We're going through an alchemical shift. Yes. We're going through changes in our physical body where we're moving from carbon-based to crystalline. But exactly. can you imagine if that happened overnight and we just woke up in our avatar consciousness and Merkaba bodies just like floating around like, oh yeah, you know, yesterday I was... Uh, standing in line uh, at the grocery store trying to get gas. <laughs> Um, and now we're just like, boom. I mean, right. there, it takes a lot of, you know, clearing. We're yes. activating dormant chakras. We're, we're figuring out what junk DNA is. So right now we need the knowledge to begin to direct the mind because our minds have been targeted. We, there's social engineering mind control. So the end times to me is the end of mind control, the end of social engineering agendas, the end of us being completely used as a battery and this vampiric parasitic system feeding on our vulnerabilities. Right. That is the end. That is a world that is collapsing. And Absolutely. for some, Absolutely. they've invested so much of their life into it. To them, it feels like the end. But for people like us that have explored consciousness or know, you know, this earth is abundant and we right. have great abilities connected with the earth and cosmos, this is just the beginning. So this is yeah. a new, based more on um, really looking at the healing path and, and, right. and getting our power back. The medical industry is taking advantage of us, oh, yeah. pharmaceutical industry. So how can we understand our symptoms and work with these ascension symptoms or any kind of adversity in our lives and leverage it for our awakening instead of allowing it to victimize us and defeat us any further than it already has? Profound. Um, further, so do you see... And again, it's an opinion question and I know, and I know you've done a lot of work with this and you know, you and Lisa Renee, profound understanding and awareness of like just the galactic influences and stuff, the, cosmo the cosmos, but do you see a time where benevolence do intervene in some capacity or are we just basically left to elevate our vibration, increase our consciousness, where we just, the, you know, the shadow inverted matrix control system just dissolves? Uh, the benevolent, forces have already been here. Yeah. I mean, there have been, you know, rescue missions. Are they of saving course. us? No, I don't think they're saving us. There have been a lot of advanced, you know, races that have been here, seeded, right. Right. that have gone extinct because the energy of the planet dropped into yeah. such a low density because of cataclysms, yep. um, all the different wars, right. uh, you know, Atlantean. Yep. Um, all fall of consciousness, planets, yes. yes. Exploded planets as well. So, you know, we've been very vulnerable and easily manipulated on a DNA level. So benevolent Forces have been here, but right. they're connected to our higher self. So exactly. it's like our immune system. Is our immune system going to save us if we have a disease? Yes. But is it going to save us if we're trashing our bodies and if we're not feeding 
the immune system and taking care of it because it's a resource. So the benevolence are here, but it's not going to do it for us. If we can meet it with our higher consciousness and awareness and integrity and also our commitment and devotion right. to doing what's right for ourselves and each other, exactly. then, then it'll be more easy, easy for it to come in. I mean, we have advanced technologies that need to be disclosed. Look what happened with Tesla and all these different you know, advanced technologies that get right. shut down. Well, it's not just going to come back unless we demand it. And it doesn't mean we have to fight, fight, fight till we're exhausted. We also have to embody the change. We have to support it. And, um, and amongst each other, we're capable of doing it just fine. And, and <laughs> until it pushes them in the corner and they're like, well, they've already disclosed it. Instead right. of waiting for them to do it, we've been doing it. You know, shows like yours and, you know, people doing presentations around the world and, you know, people that have also recovered a lot of those uh, uh, genius um, connections yeah. uh, with advanced technology that is in harmony with nature and our DNA. And, and again, beautifully said, um, it, you know, that, and again, that's why I push and constantly say, raise your vibration, right? If there's one thing you can do as an individual, it's literally to treat people with compassion, kindness, concern, caring, loving, forgiveness, literally, again, be, as you said, embody those qualities. And if you raise your vibration, you're the first person that's actually said it. I've been saying the same thing. And again, we're all so connected now due to the veil dropping and thinning. But if you raise your vibration, you're right. You're not going to be susceptible to the negative energies, to immune system deficiencies, you know, again, to be susceptible to the dark frequency, the energy, the construct, the energetics, whatever. And very few people talk about this. And I've literally been saying that, well, like, okay, let's say the coronavirus is an engineered bioweapon. Well, if you're, you know, and again, I always use the Hawkins scale, you know, for, um, to make it extract. I was just going to say, I'm admiring what's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but I mean, right, that really keeps it very abstract for people who don't understand what you and I are talking about. Because again, they don't have that level of awareness. But I mean, if you just focus on being around 450 to 500, which is love, radiance, serenity, joy, peace, you are immune, Laura. Of all people, you know better than anyone. They have no power or influence over you when you keep your vibration right here. Right. And see, it's the consciousness vibration that's high, but it doesn't mean that we're not grounded exactly. and that we're allowing ourselves to be in the physical plane. Because right. sometimes it's easy to get into a high frequency and then feel like we lose our footing. Um, yes, that's especially if you're on computers all day. Right. Right. Um, totally. So grounded to the earth. Exactly. And so that frequency is going to be a little bit, maybe spinning a little slower, but it's yeah. not a lower vibration as in the lower level of the Hawkins scale, which is apathy, fear, right. um, anger, you know, that kind of stuff. So the alchemical process is being able to look at those elementals and see, you know, the, the darker forms of them, the shadow of those energies within ourselves and, and do the work necessary to embody its highest expression because the earth ultimately is going to respond to us. If we're carrying a afflicted fire element and we're just angry and raging at everybody. I mean, that's going to ripple out. That doesn't really help. Right. But if we turn that into passion purpose and we allow that fire to be channeled into something productive, then we're making a huge change. And the same with, you know, the air element, there's mind control, there's chemtrails, look at our air quality. Um, so if we look at that element within ourselves, part particularly if we have a dominance of air signs in our astro chart, which is very helpful in these times as a tool, um, you know, and, and we step into free thinking and we clear our mind computer from any viruses or past ancestral patterns that have been harmful, then we are actually emitting a frequency that helps to clean the environment. Yeah. And that's just what I've really learned. And I feel very confident about saying that. I know it almost sounds hokey, but. No, I mean, it's not. It's true. The outside of us is very much a reflection of us. Not like everything that we attract though is something that we're made of. I mean, we're going to be challenged and we're going to be pushed to the edge. Some of it's going to be based on the law of attraction. Some, some is just going to be plain targeting to try and trip us up. So we, we just have to know the difference. As, as you said, none of that's hokey. And again, I've learned a lot recently too, but the transgenerational trauma is one of the biggest issues. Like you talk about the inflection point. Think of how many people on this planet right now are literally vibrating in fear you know, and say, uh, well, I call it, um, you know, um, uh, in lack of integrity or just fear, you know, victim, savior consciousness template. And it's because of that, Laura, they really do have stuff that happened to them in past lives or from their parents or their parents' parents. And it's literally never been integrated because they don't know how to integrate it. Right. And it, it can be so unconscious where it's like a person can say, oh, you know, my parents were really good to me. But <laughs> facade that they can't quite put their finger on. 
and and or 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 a physical issue. Oh yes. yeah, well my mom had that or my father yes. had that. Yes. Maybe heart yes. disease runs in the family. Well, what is the energy that even created that level of genetic damage? We need yep. to trace because how they were treated in previous generations that created that damage, you know, like like torture or abuse if you didn't follow the narrative. Now, you know, we might have friendly parents, but we got passed down some sort of genetic damage yeah. connected to infiltration and previous wars or previous things that took place yeah. um, that uh, created division amongst all of us. I mean, obviously the, the biggest agenda is to conquer and divide and what better than to infiltrate family lines and, and target the nuclear family and also relationships, the whole concept of sacred union. We cannot upgrade our DNA if we don't find that internal harmony. Right. And if we don't learn how to relate to one another um, in, in, in more, you know, accountability for, wow. Okay. Is, is that really my authenticity or is that a programming I adopted? Mm -hmm. Eventually it catches up with that. That's why there's so much illness yeah. because if the body is not resonant with our energy flow and the things right. that we're saying, our body's right. going to retaliate and get sick. Exactly. So unwind it. And so a lot of it's going to be unconscious though. And, and yeah. so we have to dig deep into family programmings and it's not always about family. It's also, understanding galactic history and and the rewritten history and the things that we have not been taught in school we gotta we we, we gotta just open the lid on so many levels and and the problem is is we're born into um a, a society built upon this level of social engineering where the shows that were put in front of you know starting at you know uh, as children the school systems the you know it's it's it, it's in these power structures yeah. so it's very hard to question it when when we've been conditioned to count on it and we don't want to take risks, you know, we're afraid. What if I don't go to that doctor and I decide right. to heal myself? Well, a lot of people right. are getting more comfortable with that whole notion. I mean, learning more about herbs and supplements now, I mean, in every town or city, there's got to be some sort of supplement or herbal store now. Even in the small town we live in, there's an amazing herbal store. I'm just right. like, thank God. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, and that's obviously all I've been preaching for 10 years is people attack me. You know, and obviously I've made alliances with people in allopathic medicine, but I mean, you know, I talk about it every day, sick care. I mean, you, you cannot go down that path, but you know, just really, uh, I want to uh, talk about something that you just spoke about, but something that I've really learned very, very, I wouldn't say recently, but really spent a lot of time in the last say three to four months is, you know, with uh, pushing energy towards it is the balancing of the masculine and feminine energy. And I think a lot of people on this planet today still do not understand that it's not about sex, sexual identification roles, male, female, that, you know, as beings, as soul beings, again, whirring electrons, standing waves, we are nothing more than a balance of a masculine and a feminine energetic construct. And the, uh, the misalignment in this third dimensional realm, again, since the fall of consciousness, since all the dark energy and constructs were put in place, that's the biggest problem, right? And now, if you're a man, and obviously I consider myself a very, very powerful masculine man, I have to embrace my feminine energetics and I have to learn to integrate them just as women need to learn about their masculine energetics. And I want you to talk a little bit about that because I've heard you talk at very high levels about this and you speak so elegantly about this. So talk about that for a second. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, so um, just like elements, we look at a chart, we might have a predominance of fire or earth or air or water, or maybe a person has a nice balance of all of them. So a lot of times there's a stellium where there's a lot of concentration in one. And every you know, sign carries a charge, positive or negative, masculine sure. or feminine, right. electric or magnetic. So we're dealing with electromagnetic spectrum, yes. earth grids. We're dealing with energy flow and circulation. But when we start to think it's about you know, gender and sexuality, then we can easily get played with a lot of false movements. Absolutely. confusing the youth. And that's where it's just like, can we draw the line here, please? Why would we even consider for a moment that a child that is asking or acting somewhat feminine should even have their parents consider some level of surgery? I mean, I was a tomboy. I'm so glad my mom didn't surgically yeah, give me Yeah, thank a God. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but I'm, you know, I know my sexual orientation is not in that way. I mean, it's just how can we get so lost and confused with this to the point where we're missing the mark? And, you know, and there's similar things with climate change. And I know that's, that's, a, that's an entanglement that we don't need to go into. <laughs> I love that. That's a word of entanglement. There is no climate change. Yeah. But, but it's, it's, it's taking things that we know that we're ready to solve and address as a humanity and then hijacking um, what is actually available and possible with something that is artificially induced. Right. And so, and there, and there we go into artificial timelines and, 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 you know, continual manipulation that conquer and divide. And then everybody's fighting amongst each other. I can't even say anything 
um, about certain things without having to delete and block. Um, it's just like, whoa, 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 whoa. I, I mean, how much more neutral can a person sound? Um, you know, and then if you say something about some of these agendas, you're going to offend somebody that's actually maybe the real version right. of what they're trying to push on children. And so it, it becomes like the art of words. How can we communicate without offending anybody? And can we not be so offended and just open up the conversation so we can sort all this out and know that we're all very traumatized and wounded on some level. It, we just got to find a way to communicate because that's the, the mercury energy is the magician. That's the right. great manifester of our reality. If we can't right. master our words and communication and conversations, then um, that's actually contributing to pollution and chaos. Right. We talk about climate change. What about what we're emitting? Are we exactly. emitting pollution with our negative, nasty words of hatred to one another if they right. don't agree? I mean, we are emitting either purifying energies or energies that contribute to contamination and toxicity. So, the t so well said. So the segue to that is we both know, especially in the West, they have, again, they, those who would hold us back, have manipulated the duality, dichotomy, two-party system to the point now, as you know, that there is no in-between. There is no balancing line. You're either highly polarized left progressive or highly polarized right conservative whatever republican and it's you can see it laura it's getting to the point where the acrimony and the bitterness and the divisiveness is so like pungent like it's just it stinks where are we going to go with this because i could easily say that nothing is going to be solved without civil civil unrest revolution war you know, again, and this is America we're talking about, which is so sad, but I mean, and it's an opinion question, but where do you think we go with that? Does that have to happen before we can balance the energetics and raise the, you know, get to planetary consciousness? I mean, what are your, what's your opinion? I think, you know, for some people, it, it, it does require the, the battle to get out of duality. I know that sounds almost contradictory um, until it just like, it doesn't make any more sense. How, mu how, how much can we battle family members that we think are asleep? and see that it really gets us nowhere. It only creates more isolation. Exactly. And then, oh, we haven't talked for years. You know, people are saying, I haven't talked to my brother or my mother for years because that last conversation was terrible. I mean, can we prioritize, you know, love and harmony right. and mutual respect? I mean, we're all at different stages of our exactly. soul. And, and I, as much as I might verbally speak out against a leader that I know is connected to the cabal, I refuse to hate the people that still support that person. Right. That right. if I have an open mind to this current administration and, it, and, I, and I don't say anything specifically about Trump and I'm being hated and destroyed for it, it's just like, excuse me, you know, am I supposed to be angry and hateful? Or, right. or should I be feeding what's going on in the world right now, positive energy and some level of faith by being accountable myself right. for doing good and taking on somewhat of a leadership role by uh, working on helping other people step into a leadership role and being right. sovereign? You know, and so, um, and, and, and you don't even have to, a person doesn't even have to say anything without projections just, you know, and, and it's, it's just unbelievable. So I think sometimes, some people have to see the ramifications of what it means to fight for something that you believe in and how right. detrimental and harmful that can be. You can be passionate and opinionated, but can you do it without causing harm? And, right. and, and it's like, can't we love each other a little bit more? I mean, we're trying to rehabilitate on a soul level. Right. And the outer world isn't going to reflect to us a world of peace and harmony if we ourselves don't know exactly. how to do that with each other. To, to, to your point, too many people, unfortunately, are still attached to the fight. Even, you know, on the quote unquote, you know, consciousness side or the, you know, the whatever the truth community, whatever we want to call it. There's so much dissolution there. And there's so much, as you said, you know, negative energy because of, the, again, the attachment to the fight. Um, you said something about the current administration and the cabal. I got to ask you, and I know it's an opinion question again, but is there really any leadership on this planet right now that isn't somewhat directly or indirectly attached to the cabal? I mean, Eisenhower warned us. And then, <laughs> right. and then you look at his administration. Was he completely free of it? Do you think he would ever have been able to stand there as a revolutionary saying, come on, everybody, right. no, I'm free of it. No, right. he was not able to do a whole lot. Uh, laws were put in place in 1947 right. that if you talk about UFOs or ufology or disclose any of the stuff, as we see with Phil Schneider yeah. and William Cooper, they got murdered. Laws were put in place. It, it became very, very difficult. And so, you know, I'm still getting emails to this day of things he was associated with. I'm like, do you really think he was that much right. a part of it? And even right. if he was, do you, am I him? Like, can exactly, I- Exactly, yeah. 
know? Well, even um, if he was, it was indirectly. And again, we both know you're in that position. They literally come to you and they say, if everybody that you know dies and we keep you alive and you suffer. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there is, I mean, if, if anybody were to just learn about cults in general, exactly. the world system matrix mind control agendas is built on that trying to create a, a law, a, 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 a huge cult, you know, based on belief systems. And, and if they can create enough um, like little pockets of it and then, and then pit us against each other, then everybody's fighting, you know, for something. But the, but the awakening gets targeted too. So right. the new age deceptions and, and, you know, when you think you're awakening, there's another trap, there's another butterfly trap. It's like, okay, you know, so they, they seem to always find a way to sabotage the process of awakening. We're not taught how to initiate through what we're going through as a humanity. Um, people freak out and they go on drugs or they think they're losing their mind instead of recognizing, okay, maybe you're deprogramming, maybe you're shifting the ancestral lines. Maybe you're just not able to work this kind of job or live this kind of life anymore. This is positive, but we're, we, we fear it and, and we continue to give our power away. I mean, so the, the wider world, you know, cultish kind of thing comes a lot through the media and the distortions of the masculine and feminine and, you know, us just being gullible and saying, well, if they do it, on TV, then I'm going to do it and, and emulate that. And then trends, right? And I'm not saying it's all bad. I mean, there's some things that are like, okay, harmless, I guess. Um, but uh, it's really, uh, it, it comes down to the individual um, unplugging and right. breaking those agreements and, uh, and figuring out a way to still maybe exist in the matrix and find, um, you know, ways around feeling, you know, stuck. Because a lot of these uh, weather events that are manipulated and, what we're seeing with false flags and also this virus thing, um, there's a greater agenda to push people into the cities and to, you know, right. compromise farms, right. you know? so, you know, it really comes down to each of us. And um, yeah, so whatever affiliations, I mean, if you look at Scientology, if you look at any of these cults, even connected to, you know, I mean, the, the back stories are so horrific right. that the things that we're seeing on a societal level that are running corporations, running the, 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 the stores and the places that we shop at, um, are connected to these corporations that right. typically pay the farmers zero. And, and so this level of slavery that people think was abolished is very alive and well. And so now human trafficking, satanic ritual abuse, and a lot of these really harder truths are coming forward. And people are fighting it because it's, it's, it's so hard to wrap one's head around right. um, that these things could possibly exist. But there's going to be no denial at a certain point. And hopefully these crimes against humanity will be busted down and we can rebuild based on principles of integrity and guardianship to the earth and unity consciousness without having to be the same because diversity and harmony is oneness really at the end of the day. Beautiful. We will, I, 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 you know, this has been such a profound, we, I mean, we've only been 34 minutes actually. And it's been amazing. There's so much revealed in this. So let me just ask you more, you know, opinion prediction questions. And I know we, we we're basically on the same vibrational level of thought right now. And I think we're heart connected, the capacitance, but, do you think from a timeline standpoint, and I know there's no time outside of the third dimension, but from us in this limited perspective, this limited prism vision of third dimensional existence that we're in right now. And I know that we are, you know, especially the higher vibration are kind of moving between four five and three. Whenever we react, you know, our ego gets involved. We move back into third dimension. But, and again, as you know, as a human being, the ego has a lot of, you know, very good effects. We, 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 it protects us, you know, but we do get anchored back in, but from a timeline standpoint, again, third dimensional perspective or aspect, what do you see over the next two to three years? Do you see humanity potentially finally rising back and getting back to a fifth dimensional aspect where, as you said, we, we, we heal ourselves of the trauma. We, we, we get to the point where we raise our vibration enough so that we can stop all of the negativity. I mean, what do you think? Well, I think we have to commit to that and be that, that vessel. I think the fighting part that you were talking about is do we need that revolutionary energy in, you know, in how we handle the cabal in these dark agendas, you know? And so how it plays out amongst each other is if, if somebody's holding a programming or they're attached to the dark agendas and they don't realize it and they're well-intentioned and you want to get their attention coming from a space of love, there is a fight. And, and I know that's kind of, you know, what you were referring to. And then right. I kind of went off in a different place just because of, there's so many le levels to it. So, um, so I, I do think there is a bit of a fight to bring awareness to the crimes against humanity so, so that 
they're pushed to a corner. Um, but I also see that this shift time is giving us the opportunity to, you know, really transform. And we are at a, you know, juncture uh, where a lot of this mind control is going to fall away. Right, and right. there's really no stopping it. I mean, it's sort of inevitable. Uh, so when we look at 5D, we're looking at the throat chakra, fifth mm -hmm. chakra. Right. We're also looking at the ether element. Sure. So when we connect with the ether, which is considered the fifth element, even though we're dealing with many chakras and lots of different strands of DNA, sure. but when we break it down to the elementals, you know, knowing, you know, maybe a lot of people don't, there have been reversal technologies used to block the ether energy from circulating through the earth. Of so course. that we stay enslaved. Now, uh, since 2010, the sun started to move through a theacus, the 13th sign, which is ruled by the ether. These corrections have been addressed. The mother energy is anchored round yep. back to the planet. Yep. And so now um, what's happening is our throat chakra is going through a clearing. And instead of emulating the mind control and speaking these viruses into our environment, you know, with the conversations we have or the things we stand for, we're going through an alchemical shift in our fifth chakra, um, connected to the fifth element too, that is going to allow us to speak words of authenticity that hold a frequency that can help to upgrade each other, help share codes, share frequencies that help right. us switch on what's been dormant. Because when I look at junk DNA, it's basically scrambled fire codes. But if we see what does it look like in the world, it's chaos. It's, it's, right. it's a division amongst each other. When right. we can start healing that part of ourselves and speaking more authentically and, and having good intention and doing our best with the information that's coming at us all the time from many different sources. And we begin to heal that part of us. We become a part of that greater wave of energy that creates the alchemical shift on the planet. And we are right in the mix of that. And so it really depends on the person. There's going to be more propaganda that's going to steer people and vampire off of them. And then there's going to be, you know, many who say, I'm done with that. It's like being with a, a abusive partner. Right. Like, when do we say enough? I'm sick of being used and betrayed. So it's not about giving all our power to an administration. It's about saying to ourselves, we can be a, a force of positive change and at least feed the collective positive energy and, and, you know, try and change the governmental system and who we might want to be leaders. That's all our own right. But if we don't take a stand ourselves and do the work that's necessary, we're going to be probably looping, you know, in a government system that is built on control because that's what government means. Right. So, my hope for any administration is that a new model will eventually come around just as the human vessel is shifting from what we've grown accustomed uh, to as humans to our more advanced self because we're the most advanced technology. If we focus in on AI and transhumanism, we're actually stunting our own growth. Absolutely. So all these promises of utopia are very, very um, temporary. And, and if we notice a lot of these dark or, or, or th those kind of things being presented to us only benefit some and not all. We need a, a, a full scale justice. We need to take care of those that are needing basic things like food, clean water and clothing. Right, absolutely. Yeah. Planetary consciousness. Okay, just a couple of more opinion questions and then I want you to tell people how they can work with you because I know that you do do uh, readings, um, which I'm definitely overdue for one, but um, just your opinion on QAnon um, I know there's really no right or wrong answer. I do feel that there has been an awakening for people that, you know, previously had no knowledge and things that you and I have been reading for decades. Some people are aware to it, but is it ultimately just another big, you know, cabal psyop, just again, control rulers, rigidity. I mean, what is your thoughts on it? I think that kind of discernment we have to have, even when we meet a person, a person could be perfectly charming and wonderful. Are we going <laughs> to invite them over and have them become our best friend overnight? No that wouldn't be smart. Right. And I think everybody's made that mistake. Oh, they seem so wonderful. So in life, I think we've all learned those lessons. Yeah. I do feel that Q is connected to something that was established in the Eisenhower administration. I'm not quite sure how that all went, but there's enough clues. There's enough researchers and people that have been focused on this kind of thing. Not so much about, you know, Eisenhower, the figure, but the chronology of like what right. took the second world war, project paperclip, mockingbird, all these different things ufology, all the secrecy, breeding programs, off-planet stuff, secret space programs, right. blah, blah, blah. There, I feel, is a definite positive intel, white hats. Um, and I do feel that there are benevolent beings that aren't quite human that are in the mix. But we have to understand that our genetics and who we are as multidimensional beings are connected with that as well. So I think that we're pushing 
that kind of movement when we do that work within. So what right. is the harm of those drops or people right. trying to analyze what all that means? There's really no harm in it. But what's harmful, which is just a basic thing that we need to learn about life is that we shouldn't fully give our power away. And there should always be a part of us that holds things at a little bit of arm's length. It doesn't mean that we have to go into fear and doubt and um, throw it under the bus every time there's a red flag. But um, I think, you know, we can hold it at arm's length, have it assist us in these times, but really remember, you know, where the power needs to come back to, not in an irresponsible way, but mm -hmm. where our ego is, is willing to be the power center for our higher self to express itself through. So when our ego can identify with higher values and principles, um, we're in good shape. I, I, I thought of something the other day, if we don't have a moral compass, we're basically a battery being fed on. Absolutely. So of course, yeah. And, and so morality also has to do with, uh, you know, not just b nodding our head to everything or, or what the rules are. Um, we know that that hasn't worked. So I think this is opening a doorway that has not been opened um, with any leader for a really long time, that there, there is something anonymous that is trying to send us messages. So if we follow some of those drops, I did a show about um, Rachel Chandler. Okay, that's a cue drop. Let me do my research. Absolutely connected to human trafficking and false agencies, model agencies, where the, this, the type of stuff that we see with, you know, Epstein and others, I mean, they're everywhere. Right, 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 right. So, you know, something that's trying to help us to see that, where could the harm possibly be? So the people that are retaliating against it are probably feeding something else and, and don't like the fact that they might need to open their minds and, and drop the right and left and look at the greater war between the right. deep state and us finding, you know, truth and a hidden history and a bunch of stuff that has been kept from us that is really unfair because it's been using our tax dollars to fund black ops projects and things that we are not gonna benefit from as a humanity. And, and that cannot no longer continue. Again, well said, you, you really do have to choose to opt out. And what I mean by opting out is you cannot be attached, as you just said, to the, the, the dialectic, the duality of the right, the left, the Republican, Democrat, any of that stuff, everything, as you know, Laura, is done and designed and has been to divide and conquer us. So you have to use discernment. You have to raise your vibration. You have to be a person of love and care and concern. And you, know, you talked about the rules. You know, I go by the, there's two rules on this planet, the rule of law, which is, we know, not, the, not servicing the divine and the rule of love, which is what propels and powers you know, our universe and planets and everything, really. I mean, love is God. God is love. You know, the universal field, you know, source consciousness. And that's cosmic and natural law you're talking about, which is yes. different than man-made law. Exactly. We're dealing with criminals that are putting away <laughs> right. victims that have been mistreated and abused their whole life. Absolutely. They may come and stay there in jail for years and years and years, yet people yep. are still voting into office and turning yep. a blind eye to the most horrific crimes against humanity, Ever. children, um, our food supply, you name it. Everything, um, everything. You have to make a natural law, absolutely. And, and th that kind of law is organic and, 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 it's, and it sets us straight. Life gives us what we need. Some right. might call it karma, but if we don't pay attention to what life is trying to show us and we turn to an outside teacher, we might miss the valuable lessons that our own reality is wanting to give us based on who we are on a unique level. You know, right. so I didn't mean right. to cut you off, but absolutely. No, 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 I'm, I'm glad you did. So final question. Do we evolve or are we already evolving into a bifurcated system? And I mean, you know, you and I, high vibration, spiritually doing the inner work, people who then move into communal living, technology, you know, we cannot have obviously the dark tech listening to us for planning, you know, our future, as you call it, transhumanism, um, you know, what is the, 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 the singularity nonsense, you know, versus those people. I mean, is that where humanity goes to? Or do you think that all of this darkness eventually ends and those who make it out into whatever the fifth dimensional aspect of existence are high vibrational and they've given up on, on the, you know, the full on enslavement by the dark forces? I mean, again, it's an opinion question. Well, I think everybody, okay, you could take a homeless person that's begging and victimized and defeated and, and is just looking for anything. Um, and, and might just end up buying drugs and alcohol if somebody gives them money. Then you can have somebody who has nothing who's sitting there in their light body and in a completely different zone, energetically, consciously. Right. So you can present uh, two scenarios and handle it in two completely different ways. Right. I mean, we can look at an art form and, and pull out different things. We're not going to see things the same. 
So um, I think uh, it really comes down to the individual, but on a massive scale, we are moving out of it, but it's like, it's an initiation. Right. So it's sort of like, we can all look at times in our life where we are battling our ego or battling um, heartbreak or, or addiction on any level, you know, even the, the hidden ones like sure. shopping don't realize is an addiction just as much as, you know, smoking too much. Well, I don't know what I don't, <laughs> right, I'm going to get myself in trouble here, but anyway, thank God it's like legal in most States. Almost. Um, but anyway, it's like, it really depends. So I think we all have this power struggle that we have to gain seniority over. We have to gain mastery over the mental body. And once we do that, we're going to start to see indications that we are on a positive timeline. Somebody else who might be in the power struggle might still be at a crossroads. They might still be feeling at the mercy of whatever comes in the news and feel, you know, triggers of fear. And like, you know, all of a sudden their energy drops when they thought they were doing well. They still have a little ways to go. And, and most of it is maintenance. It's not like I really feel like we arrive like, oh, now I'm all enlightened. If, yeah, if we yeah. continue to wake up in this density, I don't think we're fully there, but we can hold certain values and principles that can help us to maintain an enlightened perspective in madness and craziness um, and, and begin, you know, continue to bushwhack through the thick veil that has been placed around us. Because when we think of thinning the veil, it's really the veil between our higher and lower self. Exactly. And that integration of polarity um, allows the higher to make a life out of itself without the contradiction of, I hate my job, I, my relationships, right. my friendships are terrible, but yes, I understand ascension. Well, what about making our physical reality reflect back to us what the knowledge and higher wisdom really is? And that right. willingness is how we change the world yeah. and also how we change our lives. But we're afraid of, oh, what if you know the paycheck doesn't come in and I don't have anything for a certain amount of time? Well, that's where we could call in friends and support and live out right. of vehicle and go on road trips and stuff. There's always a way. That's true. And that's exactly how you have to look at it. There's always a way. There's always a solution. When you recognize that death of the physical avatar body is not the end and that we are energy and infinite. And again, you know, I, I always go back to that. It's like when you understand that you are not going to die, that you are at base essence, worrying electrons, right? Cosmic fire. It's like you don't have the fear of, you know, the limitation or the lack or, you know, the, the scarcity mindset that people have of like, oh my God, I only have this finite experience. And if I don't do this, or who's going to take care of my mom or who's going to do, and you, you drop all that, then you start living a level 10 life. And you're right. You don't need a lot of money, material things, shiny. I mean, it's so simplistic when you put yourself in that perspective, but very few people, again, because of the trappings of the matrix really ever get to that point. And as you know, it does take inner work. It does take silencing the mind, going within, grounding in nature, doing all these things that give us that advantage, but very few people are willing to do it, Laura. They get so caught up in this. Yeah, and I was raising all that just like anybody else. And uh, I had to take 10 years off to live on the road, to live in the wilderness, and to really see something, to learn something that I wouldn't have if I was just trying to live up to something or create some level of success. Because the shadow of success is failure. But what about victory over dark forces? That's more permanent. You know, when, when, when we can stand more sovereign, it doesn't mean anything is wrong with material abundance, but who are we when those things get removed? Can, can we stand in some level of self knowing and find that inner light when everything else is ripped away? Cause that's where we're going to like know how to survive, but not just survive, but thrive. Right. So literally survive. I mean, not survive, thrive. Yes. And you can thrive in any any realm or, uh, of, of existence, regardless of how much money you have or what you know, own or possess or any of those things, it's so important that none of that stuff matters yeah, when you die. Higher spiritual abilities. I mean, you can, they are able to materialize things. If we, exactly. were given, if we are given the chance, if our school systems or just our early education helped us to really understand what we're made of, helped right. us to you know, grow food and work with the earth, right. we wouldn't be stressing about money. And I made a joke in a Facebook post. It should be under Craigslist, like in our work to materialize food because we actually can you know Absolutely. instead of getting a job let's do the inner work to reclaim these abilities that we have because we can materialize things you know oh. and there will be advanced technologies in tune with nature and dna that we can work you know alongside with that uh will help us to be abundant without needing the dollar and the, the this enslavement system that we've been so accustomed to thinking like if we have a lot of money we got worth we've been manipulated since childhood about what real worth is self-worth right. right so it's totally true. Laura, this has been absolutely profound. If someone wants to work with you, reach out to you, you know, what's the best way they can connect with you? 
Well, I have subscribers. Uh, I have a podcast. I, I send out newsletters and I do mini readings to help people navigate their chart and get to know themselves better. And my website's cosmicgaia.org and all that information's on there, including uh, some of the events I'll be doing this year, but I do need to update it. But yeah. Beautiful. Well, listen, I profoundly grateful and appreciative that you came on today's show. It's been absolutely amazing. I can't wait to post this. This will probably show up sometime in April, early, early April, but I'll give you advance notice. You'll get a chance to see it. So to everybody, please support the amazing people that come on our show. Obviously, Laura's website is cosmicgaia.org. So please support her. And let me just say, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We'll see you guys next week.